Hello, Mr. Rodkin. On behalf of the ConAgra Foods Public Relations Department, I would like to welcome you to our team. I know you are lear learning a lot of new things right now, but I wanted to brush over some company history, past, and potential crises. I'm sure you already know the following, but ConAgra Foods is headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. We currently have around 33,000 employees and have offices in the U.S., Puerto Rico, and Mexico. A highlight of some of the products we sell are Chef Boyardee, Slim Jims, Orville Redenbacher, Healthy Choice Steamers, and Peter Pan Peanut Butter. We are very proud of our community involvement and participate in raising child hunger awareness with our Agri Foods Foundation, and we participate in other food and nutrition programs as well. We promote selling safe and wholesome products to families and are currently present in 97% of American households. Our products are offered in numerous chains, including, but not limited to, Kroger, HEB, and Homeland Grocers. Considering your experience in the food industry, you know how competitive the market is. Some of our competitors are Kraft, Tyson, General Mills, and Nestle. As well as competitors, we also have activist groups that we need to be aware of. One of the activist groups is called Organic Consumers Association or OCA. They are an online grassroots nonprofit with over 800,000 members. They encourage local and organic buying and are for the labeling of genetically modified foods. They mention the Walmartization of the economy and meaning this, this means the effects of chains and mass production of packaged products. An activist group we have had contact with in the past is PETA, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. PETA bought 140 shares of ConAgra Foods stock in order to pitch a proposal about the way animals are treated before they are slaughtered. The proposal was denied. These activist groups are against us because we sell mass product products and meat. Neither of these things are going to change for our company or theirs, so they will constantly be keeping tabs on companies like ours and our competitors. The regulators we are mandated to abide by are the Food and Drug Association, the United States Department of Agriculture, and local and state health departments. They provide dietary guidelines, are in charge of product recalls, and handle regulations and standards for food. Following their rules is very important for the safety of our consumers and our employees. There are two umbrella types of crises, intentional and unintentional. First, I'm going to go over the types of intentional crises most likely to occur down to the least likely. First is unethical behavior. The food market, as I previously stated, is extremely competitive. Although we are competing in realms of appeal, price, health, and safety, it is important to stay true to our word to gain the public's trust. Next, I group together sabotage, poor employee relationships, poor risk management, and hostile takeover. None of these are more likely to happen than the other and can all be prevented with stable and clear communication. If we stay up to date on the perception of ConAgra from the public and our own employees, we can make sure everyone feels satisfied to the highest extent. If one of these problems do occur, we will need to access the public with press releases and a news conference if deemed necessary. Next, I will address unintentional crises. The one most likely to affect ConAgra and the one that already has is product failure. In 2007, our product Peter Pan peanut butter was linked to a salmonella outbreak in Georgia, along with the generic brand version of Walmart's. According to the Peter Pan website and one of our very own press releases, this is a false recall and our products were never actually contaminated. Despite Peter Pan and ConAgra distributing press releases and not being affiliated with the Seminole outbreak, no other websites when searching, for the out when searching about, the about the outbreak updated their stories. Both websites are completely transparent about the incident. If an actual recall did need to be carried out, we would decontaminate all possible elements, cease production until fixed, and be visible to the product, to the public. Next is unforeseeable technical malfunctions. We would stop production until the problem was solved to make sure no products were harmed or exposed in the process. We would adjust the problem internally and externally to assure we are keeping everyone's safety in mind. Next are the natural disasters and disease outbreaks. These are less difficult to handle because they are understood by the public as out of our control. We need to make sure we have updated plans for both of these occurrences, like having first aid kits and food rations prepared and available, as well as various exit strategies in case of emergency. Last is a downturn in economy. This is least likely to affect us because people who are loyal customers will continue to buy our products. People will make cuts financially in other places like vacation, gasoline, and eating out. In fact, the more people eat in to save money, the quicker they will need to replenish their pantries. 
So thank you so much for listening to me today, and please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions.